So you can tell that in this tutorial what's different between our previous tutorials is that we're talking about long-term notes receivables rather than short-term receivables. And I'm going to lay out some criteria for you to check off before you actually recognize these long-term notes receivables. So first up is that to record a note receivable, the company has to become a party to the contract. So if you've taken business law, uh, a contract is established with an offer an acceptance and consideration, which means both parties have to give up something of value, which is pretty simple. It's just your basic, you give and you get something. Next up is that long-term notes receivables, they're measured at fair value. Now, fair value sometimes mixes up students, uh, not exactly the same thing as market value because market value is its actual value in the market right now. So for instance, the stock market, we know that for a certain share, we know the exact price of how much it's worth at any given second because computers are uh, very frequently buying and selling shares in the stock market. So there is that sense of liquidity in the market and we know the exact value. Now fair value is a bit different. Fair value is going to be our best estimate of the value of a product. And since we don't know exactly what the notes receivable is valued at, because there's no note receivable market, there's just a stock market which trades stocks, we're gonna have to estimate our note receivable value. And we're gonna do this by discounting, discounting the cash flows. So any cash flows that exist on our notes receivable timeline, we're going to discount them to find the fair value. And remember that there has to be, the, the transaction must be an arm's length. You can see here, Jesse from Team Rocket is pushing Ash Ketchum, or Ketchum, I forget how you pronounce his name, uh, in Pokemon. So you can see that there's an arm's length right here. And what that means is that they can't be related. So can't be related. And what I mean by that is the company, for instance, you can't have a receivable being traded between maybe a subsidiary company and the company that owns that company. So they have to be completely separate independent entities. And the final one is that we're going to remeasure the long-term notes receivables at amortized value. So if we have a discount or we have a premium, this amount is going to be amortized over the existence of the note. So maybe bit by bit until the date where the note matures, we're gonna have some of the discounts being accreted or we'll have some of the premium uh, being accreted as well. So that is your kind of criteria for recognizing, measuring, and remeasuring a long-term notes receivable. I'm just looking at some of my papers right here, and it seems like we've got a little, quite a bit more to cover. So I'm actually going to break this into two tutorials. I'll see you guys in the next one.